Hey everybody, how you doing this week? This is the beginning of module two or our second week together. And uh, one of the things that I want to start off with is just uh, to kind of uh, congratulate you guys on doing a lot of really good stuff right off the bat. A lot of you came out of the gate really strong. Uh, I saw a lot of people uh, working ahead or at least being working just above the crest of the work, not waiting to the last minute. That is awesome. Keep doing that. Uh, that is one of the keys to uh, these online classes because, again, this is an eight-week class. This moves very quickly. You have all the materials in front of you, so you can make a lot of moves forward. All right. So definitely being trying to uh, continue doing that, uh, that will be very beneficial to you. Uh, I'm also impressed by the the quality of the work that was being turned in. Um, I saw a lot of you, you know, not just yes, no answers or one sentence answers. A lot of you were doing a lot of explaining and putting in some, you know, uh, a lot of expansion of your thoughts. And that's really good because remember, in, in these online classes, when you post your information online, we only get uh, what you put to work with, right? We That has to stand on its own. We don't really get a lot of other material to work with. And so we need to make sure that what you post is your complete full thought and that everything that you need to say is included on that. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at module two. Uh, module two is all about understanding what other people say and then creating a reaction to it. And it works on this, they say, I say uh, model, right? Um, the idea that it starts off with is being able to look at something and being able to summarize, to take this larger piece of work, to digest it into something smaller and more manageable. The idea is that if you can retell an idea, uh, if you can retell to somebody else, like, here's this thing I read and this was what was in it, that really shows your understanding of it. If you didn't understand it, you would just be kind of banging around and maybe a couple of the ideas and they wouldn't be really fully developed or anything. But with your ability to restate, to summarize and to give people this kind of broad overview is really an important skill. And you're going to use this in a lot of your other classes, not just in your English class, but in your other classes when, you know, you're going to be reading a, a chapter out of something or you're supposed to respond to something. That idea that I did understand that and being able to show that you understand that original piece. I think another piece that you uh, that is important in that is that when you explain what you got out of it um, and how you took it, that also helps understand for the uh, the audience to understand maybe you interpret it differently than they interpret it. And therefore your reaction is different than their reaction. But if you can say, well, here's how I saw it. This is what I saw this as and this is what I think it means. Then we have a starting point where he's like, okay, I didn't get the reaction, but I at least understand how you got to that, right? Because look at how you interpreted this reading. So it is a, a an important skill that you're going to be able to use in a lot of different places. Uh, and that is what we're going to be looking at, being able to look at a work and be able to translate that and then respond to it in a complete full manner. Uh, one of the big first assignments that we are going to be working on in this is the writing project number one, the summary and response. Now, again, you're going to get this assignment in a lot of your other classes. Um, it won't necessarily be called this, but you'll get like a book, uh, a chapter, an article, um, some piece of information, and they're going to say, what do you think of this? It's not going to be enough to say, oh, I like it, or I didn't like it, or I whatever, right? You're going to have to be able to do that summary, that explanation, that analysis of it, and then you can have your reaction because then we can look at the reaction and say, okay, this is what you felt and here's where you got that. So the writing project number one, uh, this week we're doing like the half draft or the first part of it, right? This is your first take of it. Now, the assignment does say that it is looking for 350 to 450 words. The final version will be 750. Um, and I do understand that, you know, again, in an eight-week class, we're really, you know, we're moving through things real quickly and whatever. And the assumption is that you won't be done with this this week. That said, I would encourage you to put as much of this together and be done as much of it as you can. Because as you get feedback, as you get uh, you know, reaction from your from your peers and from me, um, that will help you. Uh, because the more you have to work with, you know, the more that you're going to get some of that feedback and the, some of that direction and some of that help to make your final product a lot better. So, again, I know it says 350 to 400, and that is the expectation. But if you're putting more in, you're going above and beyond. You're making the next step a little bit easier, and you're getting a lot of information. 
Um, when you look at this, um, we are asking you to do three pieces. First off, this introduction. Now, the introduction, we, you know, you've read about this before, and we've got some information on this before. This is where you get our attention. You introduce the topic. Um, in this, we also like to think about setting the tone, right? Like in the in the introduction, if you are really detailed, we're going to expect that throughout the rest, right? If this is really folksy, really uh, casual and laid back, then we're going to expect the rest of the paper to be like that as well. Uh, so really, the introduction sets the tone, not just introduces, gets the gets our attention and introduces the topic. It really sets the tone for the rest of the work, and then the summary. Okay, now the summary of the work is how would you retell this to somebody else with the assumption they haven't read it. Now, now I like to talk about uh, summaries in this kind of comp, um, kind of in comparison to like, what did you do last weekend? Um, you're not going to give me a blow by blow, minute by minute description of every single thing you did, right? You're going to go through and you're going to give me the highlights. You're going to give me like the three or four big things that you did. And within those three, four big things that you did, you're not going to give me every single detail about it, right? Oh, Friday night we went to dinner at uh, whatever Mexican place and then we saw Batman Forever, okay? Or what is it? The new Batman, the, the Batman, right? Um, you give us that kind of broad big piece, okay? Uh, we don't need to hear every single detail. We get the big points, the things that we need to know to understand that, right? Um, the assignment here does say that you try to use that they say. They said this. They brought up this. They they uh, explored this point. They gave us this information. Now, again, if we don't see the they or the author's name, but at least it's in that third person, right? So we really want to avoid the first person in this, at least through this part. The final part then is your response. This is where you say what you felt, and in particular, why. Where did that reaction come from? What was the thing that really triggered that for you, right? Uh, you can agree, you can disagree, you can be confused, you can you know, have a lot of questions, you might have suggestions, whatever it might be, your reaction. Uh, the reaction isn't as important as your ability to state it clearly and then be able to say, here is where I got that. When you look at paragraph six, when you look at the example they used here, that is the, the catalyst that got you to that reaction. And those are the big things that we're looking for, to be able to make your reaction match back to something in the text. Because I, as the audience then, will be able to understand why that is a valid reaction. And then the conclusion where you kind of wrap things up. Now, again, this is a half draft. So the expectation is 350, 450 words. But again, like I said, the more you can give us, the better, because then not only are you working ahead, but you're also going to get feedback on more of your paper, not just like a little chunk of it. Uh, but again, my expectation for you is 350 to 400 words, okay? Um, this can be an APA or MLA style. Either one of those is acceptable. And if you do need some help with that, please let me know so we can make sure to get that for you. There's a lot of templates out there that you can use that will really get you uh, kind of a leg up. Uh, once you do get a really good paper that you feel is really solid in one of those styles, you can keep reusing it as your template. Uh, the final draft will be due in module number three. Okay. Um, the next big assignment that we will be looking at, uh, I, this isn't a big assignment, but the uh, closed research theme check-in, okay? Um, so for this, we would like for you to be looking at two of the readings in there, okay? And then what did you find interesting or troubling or concerning or what is your reaction to this, right? Uh, where's the thing that you, you know, wh wh what, do you, what, do you, what did you get out of this, right? What were you thinking afterwards? Now, one of the things that I would suggest to you, and, and it is mentioned in here, um, you can type your information in a Word doc or uh, a Google doc or something like that. I really like doing that because it gives you all the tools for like spell check and grammar check and you can run Grammarly and those kinds of things on there. Um, I would recommend that you copy and paste it over in the end um, because it is a lot easier to use in those word processors than in one of these text windows. Okay. Uh, but again, it's your check in and said, hey, look, I've read this and this is what I'm getting out of it. Uh, for the discussion board for this week, um, so what you're going to do is after you've done your closed reading check-in, okay, then in initial post, we want you to take one of those articles, and in a new thread, we want you to look at 
one of the looking deeply questions and one of the looking broadly questions, and they're listed here. And you will do one of each. So you'll do one of these three and then one of these three. Your original post should be 150 words. Again, we are really looking for you to do that deep dive analytic, not just the articles about blank. Okay, we want to see that you have read this, you've digested it, you've got something out of it, and you have something to say about it. Okay. Um, I also want to remind you, you guys did a pretty good job the first time through. I do want to keep reminding you that one of the rubric points on the discussion boards is that you are coming back to this on multiple times, that you're posting your original post early, and that you're replying to other people on different days. Um, Again, like I said before, we really like to get that first post up early because that gives a lot of other people, or it gives people a lot of other choices, right? They can look at two or three or four to determine which one they want to reply to, and then they can look at three or four more and try to find one that they want to reply to. Uh, but if you wait until, in, in, in our case, you know, Monday night, Tuesday morning or whatever to do yours, you know, not only are you might be limited in your responses, but other people didn't have yours to respond to. And yours just kind of sits out there without any kind of feedback. So uh, definitely continue those of you that uh, that did that. Get your original post up early. Uh, there is no deadline necessarily. Uh, I would really uh, I would recommend that you get your initial post up by Friday. Um that way that gives people all weekend to look at yours and respond to it. Uh, and that gives people three, you know, two, three, four days to be able to pick yours and respond to that. Okay. Um, we then go into uh, a slideshow that talks about uh, the effective introductions. It gives you a lot of the information about introductions. Um, like I mentioned before, the big thing about introductions, we get our attention, we introduce that topic and we set the tone for the paper. Um, if you think about when you walk into Texas Roadhouse, uh, one of the restaurants we have here in town, um, you walk in, the music's loud, you're right there next to the grill, you see the smoke, you smell the meat. Uh, back in the days, you know, when we could have peanuts scattered everywhere, you know, the place is just messy and loud and bustling and, and, and it was just kind of a, a kind of a wild atmosphere a little bit, right? But that set the tone. When you walked in, you knew what you're getting. The waitress and wait, you know, the wait staff, you know, they're wearing t-shirts and blue jeans. You knew what you were getting, right? It wasn't that high-end, five-star, formal dining, you know, black and white, formal uh, waiters. It was a roadhouse. And so they set that tone for you early. And, and that's one of the things that I think is really important because sometimes if you don't try to set the tone, you will set a tone, but it may not be the tone you intend it to, right? And so, like, you just kind of put together this little introduction, and then you get into the paper, and you're really, like, into, like, you know, the, the information, you're deep diving, and you're whatever. Does that style match your introduction? And it can be a little bit jarring for the reader, um, you know, to go from one type to another. So you really want to be kind of intentional about how you focus all that. Um, anytime that you can incorporate the information to make sure that everybody's on the right page to start with, is really important introduction, uh, especially in these where we're doing these reactions, the author and the title of the work definitely have to go in the introduction. Um, they may not necessarily go in the thesis, although I'm not opposed to that. Definitely, definitely, definitely get that up early. Uh, another thing that I like to have in, um, or another thing I like to mention in the introduction when we talk about introductions is where you put your thesis statement. Um, the papers that you're writing for this class are not overly long. I mean, you know, even at even at 1,500 or 1,700 words, it's not a huge paper. Um, so definitely the thesis should go in the introduction. Now, I know in the real world, the thesis could go a lot of places, right? Um, you know, if you're writing a full book, you know, the introduction might be the thesis, the explanation of the thesis, right? Um, but because of the type of paper we're doing, and because when you leave an English class and you go to one of your other classes where the focus is on the content, not on the process of writing, be very intentional with your thesis statement. Make it very clear. And I would really recommend it being the end of the introduction, okay? I think a lot of people are just kind of used to, like, wonder what they're thinking about or wonder what this thing's about. Look for the thesis. It's going to be the last sentence of the paragraph. I know that stylistically we can do a lot of things with this and we can put it anywhere. I get that and I understand that, okay? But, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's 
it's important to understand where your audience is coming from. You know that you can put the thesis anywhere, but the audience may be expecting it in a certain place. So you might want to think about that, especially when you're talking about some of your other classes and they're looking for uh, information in a certain place. OK, uh, so that'll be gives you some information about the thesis. And then at the end of the module, we're turning in the half draft. Um, again, <clears throat> again, this is 350 to 400 words in MLA or APA style, um, and you already have the instructions of what to do. I again, I recommend the more you can include, the better. Okay, uh, the more you can give, um, it just not only helps you get ahead, but you're going to get more and better feedback. Okay, uh, we will finish the um, we will finish this draft and uh, the final draft in module three the following week okay so anyway um just kind of want to wrap up with again you guys are doing a great job keep pushing that forward if you have questions please make sure that you are emailing me that's the best way to get a hold of me you have my email address you can use the communicate uh the communicate tab on the side of uh, ivy learn you can also email me directly at jdwells at ivytech.edu my ivy learn is set to forward it to my email uh, i know that that was an issue uh, early on but i think that has been solved so if you get to a point where you're like hey i emailed you yesterday and i haven't heard a response back yet and it's been more than 24 or 30 hours or so uh, you might want to reach out again just to make sure Okay, uh, you are welcome to uh, text me 812-449-3955 uh, or you could call and leave a voicemail. If you do that, please make sure to include your name and what class you're in and what you need. That way, when I call you back, I know what kinds of things you might need if, uh, you know, if, if I need to deliver something. I have it in my hand before instead of like, OK, Let's take some time so I can find it and deliver this information back to you. It just helps me be prepared and uh, uh, to answer your questions a lot quicker. OK, guys, continue doing what you're doing. You're off to a great start. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with on your responses. Good luck, everybody.